Let's have a look at how we get started entering and defining variables in SPSS. For more detail about questions from the questionnaire, um, please see those specific videos. This is just going to give a general sort of introduction and overview to entering data and defining variables. Now this is a, a new data file in SPSS. You'll notice at the bottom you have two tabs. One is data view, this is for your data, and one is variable view, and this is for your variable names. When you enter variable names in this first row, those names are going to appear across the top as the column headings replacing the var that's there right now. So let's have a go at that. My first column, if I've done a questionnaire, is always participant ID. So I'm just going to name this variable ID. We'll come to these other columns shortly. Let's have a look at our data view. You can see that my column heading now says ID because that's my variable name. So now in this first column here, I would enter data for my ID numbers. So let's just enter uh, five participants. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now I've got a bit of data in. The data view is only for data. Never put variable names across the first row because you do not analyze variable names. You only analyze the data. Also, when you go to enter data, it should be numeric data, especially if you're going to analyze it. It's just good practice. I know that in SPSS you can kind of get away with not coding nominal variables, but it's good practice to code them anyway because SPSS is a quantitative software. It's not meant for qualitative data. So let's go to variable view. We're going to enter some data. I'm going to enter three variables. I've got my participant ID. I'm going to enter a categorical variable gender, and I'm going to enter a scale variable, which is travel time, and that's how long it takes someone to commute from their home into university. So I'm going to put my variable names in first. My second variable is gender, and my third variable is travel time. Now there's a couple rules when writing variable names. One, they must begin with a letter. Two, they cannot contain a space, and three, they cannot contain any special characters except for an underscore. So for travel time, I could put an underscore in between, and that would be acceptable, but I cannot put a space. The second column is defining the type of data, numeric, string, date, etc. Um, most of your data will most likely be numeric. Um, occasionally you may have dates. Width, don't, you know, don't need to worry about that, it has to do with character width. Um, number of decimal places, this is how many decimal places you see in the data view. So all of my data does not have any decimals, so I'm going to reduce this to zero. Now you remember before, my IDs had 1.00, 2.00, had two decimal places. Now those decimal places are gone. It's much easier to read if you don't need those decimal places. Now the label is really important. This is what's going to appear on all of your output for tables, charts, and graphs. So be a bit more descriptive. Gender, that doesn't need to change. Time it takes to travel. Oh. It's a good idea to specify units in your label as well. So my units are minutes. The next column is for value labels. You only need value labels for categorical data. So that means you tell SPSS what the codes mean. I'm going to code gender. I'm going to let zero be male and click add. And one is going to represent female. These are the codes I've given. You can use one and two if you want. It doesn't really matter. I just prefer zeros and ones. So go ahead and click OK. My travel time is scale, um, meaning it's not grouped in any way, so I don't need to put any value labels and I don't need anything for participant ID. Um, if you decide to have a code for missing data, you can define it here. So say I coded my missing data as 999, I would put that code in here. And that means if SPSS came across a 999, it would consider it missing. Um, you would need to do that for every variable where you have missing values. The last column we're going to have a look at is the level of measurement. If you're not sure about the level of measurement, please do have a look at the video I made about level of measurements in SPSS. Um, our 
ID, we are never going to use the participant ID in any kind of analysis, so it really doesn't matter what you put. I'm just going to leave it as scale because it will never be used anyway. Now, gender, that is categorical, male, female. The words give it away. Even though we have numerical codes of 0 and 1, it's not numeric, it's not scale, it's categorical. Um, now, we have th two options for categorical data, ordinal and nominal. SPSS gives you a little bit of help here, helping you remember which is which. Ordinal has groupings, but they have a step order to them because ordinal data is ordered. And nominal is just three bubbles, and there's no particular order because nominal data isn't ranked or ordered. Now, gender, male, female, I can't rank males and females, so it's going to be nominal. Travel time. Now, if you, as you can see from the data on the screen, travel time is just the travel time in minutes, how long it takes to commute. So there's no groupings. That means we can leave it as scale. All right, let's go to our data view and enter some data. We're going to have a look at the data on your screen. It's zero, let's see, zero, zero. 1, 0, 1. Now, if yours has zeros and ones, don't worry. It's just because my data file has the, um, the value labels icon pushed in or clicked. If I untick that, I can see my codes. Now, this is great because you can see on your uh, data file whether you want to see value labels or numerical codes. Let's enter travel time. 35, 15, Okay, just before we close, I'm going to go back to variable view and make a few pointers. Um, really important, remember, to put good value labels in. It's really important. So the label, the value label, this is what will appear on all of your output. If you take an extra 30 seconds to make a good label, then you don't have to relabel any of your output. Also, remember to be consistent in capitalization and punctuation, and please don't misspell anything that looks really bad on a graph. Um, and the last thing is uh, for missing data. Coding missing data is an option. It's not compulsory. But if you've got a huge data set or you've lots of missing values, it's probably a good idea so that you can keep track of your data. So if you do have a missing data code and you enter that into your data set, then you can define it here. So we've got gender and it has a missing value code of 999. So let's say, for example, this participant, participant 2, didn't specify their gender. I can then choose to code that as 999. And since I defined it in my variable view, SPSS will recognize that 999 to be missing. Okay? Um, if you've got a questionnaire and you want to see more specific question types from a questionnaire, please have a look at those relevant videos.